Megazord! Everything about this toy is iconic, starting with the box. Because it screams out the hyperbole on which this franchise is run. It's an exaggeration, not to be taken too seriously, but this is a Mega Zord. This was the first ever Super Sentai Mecha that had been pushed into the Western mainstream from Japan. We didn't know what a Megazord was, to most people this was probably just a knockoff of Voltron or Transformers. Of course Super Sentai had their first robot in 1979, their first transforming one in 1980, beating both Voltron and Transformers to the pitch. But I'm getting sidetracked. Released in US, UK and European markets between 1993 and 1994, Hard to believe then, probably even impossible, that over the next 25 years we would see another 100 or so Power Rangers Megazord toys. And we're still getting them now. Megazord certainly set out to make a name for itself, encapsulated so proudly in that giant word arty typeface. Sure, future boxers would downplay the name sizing a bit, but considering how off the wall this was to begin with, this was certainly the best possible way to announce itself. I was so pleased when they emulated that styling on the 2013 Legacy Megazord box, but I don't want to go into too much detail on the Legacy Megazord today because that would be getting away from the point of this video, which is to respect and fawn over everything that made this such a great toy a quarter of a century ago. Ooh, wow, that, that makes me feel old. Whether you call it the Deluxe Megazord, the Original Megazord, the Dino Megazord, or the cheap version of Dijusion, this will always be it for Power Rangers, the one that came first. I've obviously got the UK edition, note that it omits the Power Zord system tag in the corner, and for some reason Bandai UK opted not to include Mighty Morphin in the titling on all of their Power Ranger products. This toy has a part in one of my earliest childhood memories. I remember waking up in the middle of the night on Christmas morning of 1994. We never had presents in our bedrooms, but on this occasion I remember opening my eyes and there, through this shard of light that was coming through my door from the hallway, being this giant rectangular box just sat on the carpet, covered in gift wrap, waiting to be opened. I look back through the tunnel of time to that moment, and ever since I've felt a little bit of that excitement, wonder and victory every time I've bought another Megazord since. Yeah, so you know, just once or twice. Apart from a lot of sun damage, as I foolishly used to keep my Megazords displayed on a window still, I really looked after this thing. It has lost a lot of its joint tightness, but like a lot of old toys, it still stands fine and there's no clips broken that would impede its transformation. In the UK, we sadly got the version with the rubber power sword, and I did lose the tip of the T-Rex very early on. I also needed to rebuy one of the little grey cannons off of eBay, but everything else is just as it was then. Promise. At the time, I definitely never had a combining toy before, one where toys started off one way and then transformed into something else. The Zords together look awesome, and a bit like the new movie Zords, they're probably more screen accurate in their individual forms than their combined one. However, stickers were one thing that they got really wrong back then, completely redesigning them from the Japan version, and not in a good way. The Mastodon's M symbols are probably the worst culprit, Stickers were massively improved on in the 2013 Legacy Edition, and even more so through custom stickers. Go and see my Instagram for a bit more on that one. That being said, at the time, it wasn't such a big deal. I knew this was the official release, and as a kid you're a bit more gullible to this type of thing. I just figured they probably couldn't make them screen accurate for whatever reason. Importantly, these were the days before the internet. So there was no just hopping on eBay and buying the previous year's Japanese version. There were no repro label custom stickers. It really was the dark times. Ignoring this particular sticking point, when I compare these Zords to say Dino Thunder, Dino Charge and the new movie, they just pop in a more detailed way. To me, they're the best Dino Zords we've had. They're so obviously machines, but all the character of what they're supposed to be shines through. I think Dino Thunder look more like robots, Dino Charge look more cartoonish, the movie Zords look more melted and indistinguishable from each other. These originals had a strong look and identity, and were engineered within the confines of what they were supposed to be, which were gigantic assault vehicles. Not many Megazords have a secondary combination mode, but this one did, and the five Zords come together to form tank mode. This used to be my least favourite mode, mostly because the pterodactyl always seemed to fall off. 
and the Mastodon tusks still do. But I did always combine up to Megazord through the tank mode just like they did on TV. Something they did get right was to give wheels to the blue and yellow Zords. Obviously the Triceratops needs them to get around, but amazingly the Sabertooth Tiger, who doesn't need wheels apart from when in tank mode, gets them also. This wasn't repeated for either Zord in the Legacy release, which was a bit of a shame and felt like something of a quality downgrade. When you get to that final towering Megazord mode, it's still an exciting fusion of these icons. I remember getting everyone who would visit our house to watch me transform this thing and try to get them to be as excited about it as I was. I still am now, I'm telling you guys. So the proportions of the body and legs are a little too wide and chunky. It's kind of ridiculous when you look at it now. I remember thinking back then that it had to be to give the dinosaurs their look. It took years before Bandai would alter their Megazord designs to be more streamlined, and it would be 2010 in Bandai America before we got a streamlined version of this toy. Though Bandai Japan's upcoming Soul of Chogokin release will give us an even more detailed version. Sometimes I consider getting the repro labels for this thing, but then I remember what a team effort it was to get it in the first place. Like my dad had to find the thing in the Christmas of 94, which I have no idea how he did. My mum applied the stickers for me back then, and I just don't want to change anything. I have two versions of Legacy Megazord, one in the stickers it came with, one in more screen accurate customs, and that's enough for me. I will also say that though Legacy looks way better when combined, the actual transformation it takes to get there isn't as fun. They obviously had to reverse engineer the original transformation, and in doing so, they changed a few things to incorporate their new Zord Builder gimmick. But there are a few things with the Legacy Megazord that don't snap together as satisfyingly as they did on the original. For all its streamlined features, the Legacy version feels weaker for it. Honestly, a lot of the issues I have are with the Tyrannosaurus' knees, and I'm sure at some stage I'll get around to doing a Legacy Megazord video. But in the context of this video alone, its flaws just make me more thankful for the original and how things worked. Yes, my old toy has gone quite loose and floppy, but that's after several decades, and when I had it, it suffered some really rough play, like smashing it into villains, throwing them around the room a bit. They got really served when I was a kid, but they still come back swinging. There was a durability there that I know people will argue is still there, especially in the Bandai America line, but you still had that Bandai Japan quality level to the plastic. That density that reminded you that you were playing with a force to be reckoned with, with a Megazord. The joy of Power Rangers toys doesn't just stop at the first transformation though, oh no. And you can probably guess where we're going to take things in the next video. Mm -hmm. That's everything for this one. What are your thoughts on the original Power Rangers or toys? Until next time, see you later.